we're talking about legs, and I get a lot of inquiries, people asking me, um, you know, how come you're not showing any videos of you training legs? You know, you don't really talk about legs, we don't see you training legs, you know, what's up with the legs? So uh, I'm here today to do a little legs. <laughs> uh, but the truth of the matter is, because I'm an honest guy, and you know, I tell straight up is, I don't really train legs. And you know, I do here and there, but I'm not a bodybuilder anymore, and I'm not trying to have, you know, 34 inch quads anymore. It's uh, not practical for me. Um, never gonna get on stage and uh, you know to put jeans on and not have them fit and you know to put baby oil between my legs every day and have rashes and you know nowhere for you know certain things to be it just doesn't make sense to me so uh, you know my legs right now honestly measurement is about 29 and a half which you know a lot of people would say hey that's you know that's a little small for a guy that weighs 290 and that's fine I don't you know really care what other people think of my physique it's more about what I think you know I have to look in the mirror every day and be happy and um, this is what makes me happy. If I wanted big legs, I could have them in about three months. Um, if people look back at my pictures, you know, they'll see that was my strong point back in my competitive days. I've always had larger legs than upper body. So in my head, all the years of competing, I always had to bring my upper body up to match my legs. So still psychologically, I feel like my upper body is not quite what it needs to be. And obviously I know it is and people tell me it is, but I still feel like I'm lacking. Um, you know, you always feel like you're lacking. You're always trying to push, you know, to be a little better. And as far as leg tips, um, for me, uh, squats is A number one. Nothing beats squats, you know? The hardest exercise there is, the hardest one to do is always gonna be the best. The one you hate the most is the one that's the best. The exercise you hate doing is the one you should be doing every day, every workout. And uh, squats, uh, um, the biggest mistake I see people make is not going full range of motion. I always talk about full range of motion, and full range of motion is, it's simple, it's basically full range of motion. As far down as you can go is full range of motion. And you're capable of bringing your glutes all the way down, touching your ankles. And that's full range of motion, not 90 degrees. All the way down, all the way up. And uh, if you're not doing full range of motion, you're missing out. You know, you need, muscle needs full range of motion. And another mistake that I see is, uh, I see people go up and rest, squat. Rest, squat, rest. Why are you resting on top? I know people say, well, I'm flexing. You're not flexing, you're resting. You know, when it comes to a compound movement, you know, just, just crank those reps out, you know, pump that blood in there. And I guarantee if you uh, go in the gym and you do a squat 20 reps nonstop, bam, 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 your legs are gonna be burning. And that burn is what's telling you it's hard and that burn is telling you to stop. And that burn is what's telling you to stop at the top and rest because it's hurting. Well, don't stop, make it hurt. Whatever makes it hurt is good. So, the, you know, no pain, no gain. So uh, that's a huge, huge point as far as making your legs grow is, you know, whatever's the hardest route is the route you need to take. And uh, as far as another point that I need to make, I feel I need to make is, you know, a lot of people, again, they will follow someone else's leg routine because that person has good legs. Well, that person has developed a leg routine to fit what he needs to build to work on his legs. So just following his routine is not, doesn't make any sense. You have to actually look at your quad and decipher, do I have more outer sweep and I need a little more inner, vice versa, you know? And then you need to figure out a routine that fits what you're trying to accomplish as far as making your quads perfect. You know, it's all about you as an individual. Bodybuilding is an individual sport and you have to make your physique the best it can be. And copying someone else's routine is not necessarily the best option for you. So like I say, if I tell you this is my routine, it might not be best for you. You know, I can tell you the reasons why this is my routine and then you can decipher whether you have the same, you know, weaknesses or not. So uh, it's very important, you know, is uh, figuring out your routine is basically based on your development.
I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as, I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it. Got it. It's only by the the right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster. A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That does no, no way. That stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me. 